Hey y'all. Today I am going to answer a lot of the questions that I have been getting down in my comment section about homeschool. I just want to share our journey with you guys and just kind of tell you a little bit about how we do things. Ben wanted to tell you guys about Passy Bunny. You want to introduce them? Yeah. I need to... Oh, yeah. The, the, the heart. Yeah. Passy Bunny? Okay, I'm going to tell people about Passy Bunny, okay? okay? So Benjamin had a pacifier, didn't you? And um, when he turned three, it was time to have no more pacifier. And so we took his pacifier to the mall and we went to build a bear and he built Passy Bunny and they put his pacifier inside Passy Bunny. Isn't that neat? Oh, candle's done. I will tell you though that my sister-in-law did the same thing and recently my nephew who is a twin, she's got twins that are the same age as Ben and they also made a passy puppy and a passy bear I think and um, Lily had a passy bunny. Okay, Lily had a passy bunny. So it was a passy puppy and a passy bunny. And um, Judah conducted a, a passy dog. He conducted an emergency operation on his passy dog the other night. And, and, then, and, then, and then. My little tomato sprout starts that um, you guys have been asking about are just starting to really get some roots if you can see them on there i need to add some more water to it i noticed the leaves were yellowing a little bit the other day and i got nervous because at first i thought that that uh septoria leaf spot that had become so prevalent down in my garden had possibly been in these plants but i realized that they weren't really spotting they were just turning yellow so if your leaves on your plants are turning yellow a lot of times that's just the sign of a hungry plant like they just need some nutrients um, I put a little bit of this Super Thrive kelp supplement into the water. Um, this is not organic certified. This is one of those things that I use. That's why I don't claim that I garden organically because sometimes I'll use stuff like this that is natural but it's not necessarily organic certified. But my mom gave me this, uh, not this particular bottle, but years ago, she swears by it and I've always used it. If you know something that is better, that is organic certified, let me know. I've done research about it and I feel okay about it, but if you know something better, I'd love to know. And since I put just a tiny bit of this in the water with these, um, they greened right back up and the yellowing hasn't spread at all. We're starting to get some roots, so I'm hoping to get those put into some soil pretty soon. So I never thought that I would homeschool, ever. Like that was not something that was even remotely on my radar. I liked the public school system here. We had a school that my kids went to as the same elementary school I went to. The teachers were great, and of course my kids were really young. It was when Jackson and Asher were early on in elementary, kindergarten, first and second grade, they went to this public school. Well, we moved out to our house and we are in the middle of the country. Our, the closest town is about eight miles from here, but whenever we moved in, um, some of you have heard me talk about it before, we moved in on the day of a really large tornado that really just brought a lot of damage to this community. We actually went to register the kids for school the week of the tornado. So as you can imagine, everything was kind of flustered, and I guess we ended up talking to a volunteer that day that didn't have all the information and what it boils down to is they took our registration and we decided to let our kids finish out the school year at the school that they'd been at and we were gonna start at the school by our house the, the following school year because we had just like two weeks left in the school year when we moved out here so it comes down to starting school the next year and we literally we've got the supplies bought we have gone up to the school and visited it we are ready to go and Jackson, who was going to be in the third grade, wanted to ride the school bus. I'd always taken my kids to school. <laughs> I had always taken my kids to school and I had completely planned on just driving them. But because he really wanted to ride the bus and the school was just pretty close, I was like, well, I'll look into it and see maybe you can ride the bus home or something like that. 
and I call, find out through the bus person that we're actually not in the school district. It was a mistake. We actually belong to another school district. We're in a really weird pocket out here of rural addresses. And the school district that my kids are actually zoned to is a 30 minute drive in the other direction. It's in a town that we're actually much further away from. And that's just how it is when you live rural sometimes. Go get the school stuff together. Go get the other things, okay? So Go. we can get ready for school? Yes. So at the time, I was pregnant with Benjamin. I had Toby and Ezra who were both under the age of three. And I had Jackson and Asher in school and I did not feel comfortable putting my young children on a public school bus to drive every morning and back for an hour. I was not in a place that I could commit to driving them myself because I couldn't spend that much time in the car with having younger kids. And so literally as a matter of necessity, we went to homeschooling. I mean, just honestly, without any preparation, without that being something that I wanted to do at all, it just, it was like, well, I don't know what else to do. So fast forward throughout that year and we really loved it. We loved having the kids here. I loved having the extra time with them. They were doing really well at homeschool. So for the next three years, we homeschooled. Um, I homeschooled Jackson and Asher, of course, you know, worked with Toby and Ezra a little bit and then Benjamin as he got a little older. And then last year, Jackson started asking if he could go to public school. Um, I've shared before I'm an incredibly introverted person, which might be surprising because I do all of these videos, but I really am. I need my time to recharge and I don't have really high social needs. Um, Asher is the same way. He is very introverted. He is fine being by himself, but Jackson is wildly extroverted. I mean, he is a social butterfly. He wants friendships. He wants lots of relationships. He gets really bogged down by being home for long periods and not having a lot of social interaction. So he started really wanting to go to public school. And I'll be honest, it made me kind of nervous. So I really prayed about it for about a semester and um, what I came down to was that I wanted to give him the option. Jackson is a really good kid. He is very uh, mature. He is very responsive as far as taking responsibility whenever he makes a bad choice. He takes full responsibility for it. Um, and we have a really strong relationship. You know, our relationship is not just based on him doing what I say. It's based on, you know, building trust and respect and honor and having a loving relationship. And so I do trust him. So I gave him the option to do public school under the agreement that he would make good choices and that if I saw that public school was becoming a really negative thing for his character and for his decision making that at that point um, that we would have to discuss again whether that was something that I was comfortable with. And so I gave him, I gave him the choice and he chose public school. He started in the middle of the year last year. Um, he tested whenever he went into the school and there were just no hiccups. He slid right into the curriculum there and um, didn't have any issues being behind or anything like that which was really good. And that was something that I was concerned about because I am such a laid back homeschooler. I don't do a lot of testing and grades. I just make sure my children understand the concepts before we move on. And so that was encouraging that he was able to just, you know, slide right in with his peers. He did public school for the semester last year. And then of course he just started back in the seventh grade. Um, I love the school that he's at. It's a really small town, small school system, very hands-on teacher, lots of communication. Um, I'm able to be involved as I want to be. I'm able to go on the field trips. I've gotten to know his friends. He has gotten involved in sports now. He did band last year. And He's trying sports this year and seeing kind of where he wants to go. That answers the question as to why I have one child that is in public school and the rest are homeschooled. Um, I do prefer homeschool. That's the route that I choose. However, I want to give my kids the ability at some point whenever I feel like they are at a place to take responsibility for the choices that they make. I want to give them the opportunity to make choices. And I think that that's a really growing thing, not just for him, but for me too. So I think that this was a really good opportunity for, for all of us, for one, for me to, to trust Jackson to make this choice and trust God to keep him in that choice. And you know, for him to realize that he has the power to make those choices as far as how things go. My younger kids, um, I am not ready to let them choose public school. They kind of talked about it when Jackson was going, like that would be really exciting. But 
I think we're gonna stick with homeschool for them. And I, I think that given their personalities, that as they get older, they're going to choose to stay in homeschool. Uh, Asher totally chooses homeschool. He has absolutely no interest in public school. And I can see my younger boys going the same way. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about like our actual homeschool day um, and how we do this. I do not consider myself an authority on this at all. Uh, to be honest, I can see a lot of room for improvement. However, it is something that I do think people make a lot harder than it has to be, especially when you're talking about young children. We largely use a curriculum called The Good and the Beautiful, and it is um, a language-based curriculum. It uses a lot of scripture and a lot of classic literature in order to teach language, history, and we really like it. Um, we don't do that exclusively, and they don't have a math program for the older ages. What we settled on math for this year was um, Horizons for Asher. We've done, we've used Horizons before and we did like it. So that's what he decided he wanted to do. We went and looked at some different programs. Some of you suggested some online programs and so we may look into those. Our days, um, I, I just came in from milking the goats this morning at about nine and we kind of started here. With homeschool, you do have the flexibility of getting started later if you want to, and it actually doesn't take as long as you think, especially for the younger kids. I mean, we can get done their lessons in under two hours easily, um, because whenever you think about public school, there's a lot that goes into that, that it takes so long because you're dealing with so many kids, and you're dealing with lunch and recess and all of these other things, but the actual learning part, it's not eight hours of the day. The time commitment isn't what you think. I mean, we're not sitting in a classroom setting for six to eight hours a day. It's just that doesn't happen. Another thing that I love about homeschooling is really getting to focus on life skills. My kids kind of have the ability to choose how much they want to be involved in the farm. There are some things that are not optional. Um, there are some chores that they help with that we don't ask them if they want to. I mean, that's, that's part of it. There are some chores. However, I don't make them uh, do a tremendous amount of farm or garden work with if that's not something that they're interested in I would yeah. rather it be a choice and a passion for them rather than something that they were forced to do and therefore that they learn to hate you'll see my sons cooking a lot you will see them helping with some things that are pretty cool I mean taking care of goats feeding the goats their bottles that's kind of one of the kids jobs a lot of the times taking care of our pets like feeding the dog and the cat and I do teach them how to cook they have a lot of understanding about things like how to grocery shop as well as teaching them things like hunting and how to build things these are all things that we feel like are part of it's not necessarily that it's part of homeschooling it's just things that we want them to have that knowledge of and you know there have been a lot of things that have been just normal life lessons for them that otherwise and you know if they were in a public school setting and they were living somewhere other than the farm they would have learned about through classroom and textbooks things like you know the life cycle of a frog they have seen birth they understand growing things in a garden they understand life cycles and the process of chicks hatching um you know i take eggs down to a local school for them to run an incubator in their classroom every year and that's just a normal part of life for my kids and so there have been a lot of things like that that they've just learned hands-on we do a curriculum based approach to learning um, mixed in with a lot of hands-on just like life skills and just doing things naturally as the need comes up so it is it's hard sometimes it's definitely can be a juggling act and in the past there were times that I was really trying to juggle too much and I wasn't giving homeschool the full attention that it really needed to be very successful I mean it was okay and they were learning but they weren't really thriving and loving it and I wanted them to be able to thrive and love it and so like really now I don't make a lot of plans away from my house during the week because with things like doing homeschool for all of them and then doing farm stuff doing YouTube writing for the places that I write the magazines that I write 
hoping to get a book finished and published sometime in the foreseeable future. All of these things, I just can't give my time away outside of here. You know, talking about homeschool, one thing that I really have to address is the fact that anytime that you're going to choose to do something where you don't have a boss, um, where you don't have the accountability and the structure of kind of the normal way of doing things, it takes a lot of intentionality and it takes a lot of um, being willing to be honest with yourself and say, you know, am I, am I, am I doing this with honor? Like, am I, am I doing this with excellence? And then to adjust whenever you honestly assess that you're not. And so that's kind of been my homeschool journey. There's been a lot of introspection of saying, okay, I think I can do this better. I think I can work on this better. I think I could see better results here because I don't, I don't want to just teach my kids and check it off the list and, you know, advance them to the next grade. I want to raise people who are passionate about learning and I want I want them to be curious and I want to reward curiosity and creativity and and all of those things and so it's it's beyond just finishing a curriculum book. It's a matter of engaging in a way that I'm really seeing the gifts that have been placed inside of them and growing those like you would nurture a plant in the garden. We do most of our homeschool at the kitchen table. I have a trunk full of like supplies and art stuff here. And then my junkie hutch, that's all full of school supplies and different things. I had to actually turn the camera off to get the school done so we could carry on with our day. Sometimes I make these long chatty videos and I just feel like, ah, this is so much. And I, you know, I start to feel like maybe it's not gonna be beneficial. But I, I do understand that one person's experience can be very empowering to another person. And so I just wanna take kind of the opportunity, like in summation of this whole thing, to encourage you that if this is something that you feel called to, if you feel led to homeschool your kids, that it is possible. It does take some intentionality. It takes being honest with yourself. It takes prioritizing. That's all true. But as far as feeling like you don't have the capacity to do it, um, like you're not wired for it or anything like that, or if it's not something that you feel qualified for, I think you should take a second look at that. If you feel called to it, it's incredible how we might feel completely unqualified for the things that we feel called to, and God always works it out. Whenever it comes down to the topic of faith with homeschooling, you see a lot of homeschooling and families of faith and I think sometimes that gets kind of wrapped up with this idea that believing families would want to completely keep their children in like a completely controlled atmosphere it's it's true that I want to protect my kids and I mean they're not exposed to a lot of really worldly stuff they're just my kids aren't they don't see r-rated movies they don't listen to a lot of secular music like they you know I mean that's just true my kids are pretty sheltered that's it that's a true statement. However, for me, homeschooling is not so much a fear of what's out there, more than the fact that I really believe that, that we're called to legacy. And for me, because I have the ability and the time to homeschool my kids, I want to invest as much time in them as I can. I do feel called to it. However, as exampled with Jackson, you know, if the time comes to let my children go into the public school system, I am going to choose to trust my relationship with them over however the world may attempt to sway them and so I do take a little extra effort when it comes to Jackson to make sure that relationship stays strong even though he does ride the bus I you know I drive him to school occasionally we go eat breakfast and just talk and you know I make the the in the effort to be intentional and I trust his decision making I don't necessarily homeschool because of a, a real big concern about what he may learn, what they may learn. Um, I, I like being able to protect them. I like being able to be the greater influence over their life up until the point that they might choose something else, at which point that I'm, I'm still gonna believe that I have great influence and what I've invested in them has gonna provide lasting fruit. However, I, I just, I guess what I'm trying to say, I know I'm kind of like all over the place, but in any decision making, when it comes to whether you're going to homeschool your kids, whether you're going to send them to public school, any time that it comes down to decision making, we just really have to look at the motive of our heart and see what is driving us. Because I believe that if you uh, make the decision to either send your children to public school or keep them home, and that is driven by your love for them and your trust in God over them, that you're going to see success. However, if you're making those decisions that is driven by fear of any factor, you know, fear 
to let them go because of you know what might happen to them you know fear to keep them home because you might fail them fear you know I mean fear can can really mess with you and the thing is you love your kids and and fear <laughs> fears mortal enemy is love it perfect love casts out fear and so that is why you know fear really tries to bring a lot of perversion in whenever it's an area where your heart is heavily invested you really love your kids and so fear will try to make you believe that you have to you know have a super tight grip of control because that's what love looks like and that's that's not really what love looks like love looks like investment it looks like relationship it, it looks like building trust and honor and it looks like giving the absolute best you can so the bottom line of all that come to a place that you search your heart Make your decision based on where you feel led, where your peace is, and understand that wherever that is, whether it is out of your home or in your home, God's grace is sufficient in every situation. So, I, I don't know, I really just felt like throwing that in here just at the end of this really long chatty video. And so I hope that helps you, whoever you are, if that was meant for someone. <laughs> And I thank you all so much for listening. I really am just blown away that I have the opportunity to share my heart and my processes and that that could help anyone at all. So thank you so much. I bless you. Until next time.